A few years ago, back in 2018, I was scrolling through YouTube looking for something to occupy my bored teenage brain. Now, teenage boys crave two things, sexual content and violence. Well, I'm not sure about the violence part, but I craved it like gambling addicts crave 12-bet parlays. On this particular day, I noticed that the UFC had a free fight uploaded on their YouTube channel and the thumbnail featured a kid that looked like he played Magic the Gathering and wore Velcro shoes until the age of 12. That kid, of course, being Chase Hooper. Chase Hooper, for those who are not educated, is a very young MMA fighter who fights in the UFC. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialist who oddly looks like a skinny version of Ben Askren. In the MMA community, he is known for being pretty much a meme character with some interesting gimmicks and that he gets beat up a lot. Chase Hooper, to keep it frank with you, isn't that good of an MMA fighter. I like to say he is at least an okay fighter, but he isn't. He is pretty much a glorified punching bag that is only dangerous if he gets a hold of his opponent. He has a knack of having his chin in the air and has that Homer Simpson defense. I don't really want to rag on him too much since he's only 23 years old, which in MMA terms, he's still a baby, but I'm not criticizing him. I'm just being real. I love Hooper. He has a very charismatic social media presence, which means that he's awkward in real life. And he likes M&Ms, my type of guy. I may joke about him and semi-clown him throughout this video, but I truly hope he finds success in this career. So remember that. Now, I would start off with Chase Hooper's journey when he was first concepted at birth, probably in a Denny's bathroom or something, but I don't want to edit this video for three days, so we will start off with some background information and his first MMA fight. Chase Hooper has been in the fight game since he was a little boy. He started training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at the age of nine and was clearly good at it since he became an IBJJF Pan American Champion at the age of 16. He actually recently got his black belt, and when I mean recent, I'm talking about in the past two years. He's been training at Combat Sports and Fitness in Washington for the past like 14 years, which based off his results so far, it's gone alright I guess. Jumping to his first MMA fight, which was an amateur bout back in 2016 when he was only 17 years old, this fight took place on a card called Rumble on the Ridge 36, a fight promotion that took place in a casino in Washington. Now, a problem arise for Hooper since he was underage and couldn't really fight in most promotions so he actually had a fight on reservations which of course always contained casinos. His opponent for this fight was someone called Patrick Harris who only fought twice in his career and on Tapology has a photo of Chuck Norris representing him. Hooper won this fight by KO and I couldn't find a video of it so I imagine the promotion let Hooper fight with a sledgehammer or something considering Hooper's striking capabilities. He ended his amateur career 5-0 finishing all 5 fights in the first round. Once he turned 18 he straight away started his pro MMA career. Now I'm going to skip his first 5 professional MMA fights since I want to talk about his first interaction with the UFC. In 2018 Hooper got a call to Dana White's Contender Series at the ripe age of 18. This would be his sixth professional fight, and his opponent was a 20-year-old Hawaiian-born Kanan Kamikaze. I don't know how to pronounce his name. This fight was the first fight I've seen of Hooper, and to be real with you, I wasn't too impressed. To summarize this fight, Hooper got rocked many times in the first round, looking like one of those fighters you see in boxing that has a record of like 29-106, whose main purpose is to pad up up-and-coming boxers' records. But in round 2 and 3 of this fight, Hooper suffocated Kamikaze and almost submitted him. He ended up winning this fight by decision, but he wasn't offered a UFC contract by Kingpin, but instead he got a developmental contract, which meant he would fight a few more times on the regional scene then he would fight in the UFC. He would end up fighting three more times in the regional scene, winning two fights by finishes and one split decision draw. He then would be offered his first UFC fight in 2019, and this is where his UFC journey began. Hooper's UFC career so far has been very underwhelming. He won his debut against Daniel Tamar by TKO, and since then has flip-flopped in the win-loss department in his six UFC fights. In all honesty, his competition has been very low besides Alex Caceres, who he lost a decision to. This isn't really a surprise, he's still very young. Hooper's most recent win is against Felipe Colares in a fight in which Hooper dominated him and he ended up getting a TKO with his pillow fist. He was very controlling and his ground game looked 
phenomenal. Of course, in his next fight, he got absolutely bonked on like he was a pregnant woman in Albuquerque, and it was his first time being finished in the octagon. The fight I'm talking about is his most recent fight against fellow contender series alum, Steve Garcia. This fight took place on UFC fight night Calvin Cater versus Arnold Allen, and Hooper was a negative 320 favorite. What does that exactly mean? Don't know because I don't bet, but Hooper was a huge favorite pretty much. This fight in particular told me that Hooper desperately needed to not compete in the UFC right now. His striking is still terrible, even after working with the Karate Hottie Wonder Boy and his defense is as useful as a condom that is two sizes too large. Hooper got beat up. It looked like a fight between a small child and his drunk dad after the Packers lost. He lost in the first round by TKO. Hooper had nothing for Garcia. Now, why do I think Hooper shouldn't be in the UFC even though he has an okay record of 3-3 three three in it? First of all, like I mentioned, his competition has been very low and he has struggled even in his wins. His match with Peter Bure is a prime example of him getting beat up but winning the fight. In this fight, Hooper struggled getting Bure down and he was getting tagged throughout this fight, especially with low kicks. He was down 20 to 18 on all the judges' scorecards going into the third round, but Hooper was able to pull off an Amari roll and able to get a hold of Bure's leg. Bure, in all of his wisdom, started headbutting Hooper's punches like a crack addict headbutting your car. Hooper eventually he was able to secure a leg lock and win this fight. Hooper's strengths and weaknesses are so imbalanced between them. Hooper's only strength is his ground game, even though he doesn't have the wrestling like his dad, Ben Askren. The reason why his nickname is the Teenage Dream is because he fights like he isn't one. Let's list off all of his weaknesses. He is not athletic. He lacks explosiveness. He is super slow in pretty much all facets of his game. He lacks wrestling capabilities. He never moves from his opponent's power side. The Garcia fight is a great example of this. His striking defense is piss poor and his punches have no pop to them. His opponents aren't scared of his striking, which changes the dynamic of the fight. Since he also has no wrestling, his opponents can pretty much throw anything and see off on him as long as they don't tangle with his lanky frame. Hooper, for some reason, likes to fight in the pocket even though he's like 6'1". This is a problem since he's so slow and once he gets in the pocket, by the time he throws one punch, his opponent hits him with like five of their own. Especially with all the loopy punches he throws. He looks like a nerd trying to fight his bully without the Hollywood plot armor. Now, I've been ragging on Hooper for the past like five, seven minutes, but what can he do to improve? First of all, he needs to be cut from the UFC. Not because he's a boring fighter or he can't win fights in the UFC, but because being in the UFC is stunting his growth physically and mentally. His best move is to go to a regional promotion or a promotion like the LFA so that he can actually improve his game against lesser competition. Going to the UFC so early, cutting all of this weight has seriously stunted his physical growth. He needs to work on his power and speed even if he might genetically just be slow. Just working on his body would greatly improve his performances. Honestly, if he ever fills out his frame, he's going to be fighting at lightweight. When it comes to skill set, like most BJJ guys, he needs to work on his wrestling or at least find a way to secure a takedown. That's about it. Striking wise, his fighting style should resemble gains, bouncing on his feet, taking pot shots from the outside, but he probably lacks athleticism to, to pull this off to a level of gains. But not utilizing his reach and height is just reminding me of James Vick or Shrove. Finally, he probably needs to switch camps to somewhere else. A change of scenery might be good for him. Overall, Hooper isn't cut out for the UFC yet, and he is just taking an insane amount of damage at a young age and stunting his physical development, and probably is going to be drilling by the age of 40. But I do believe if he works on things like takedowns in his body for a couple of years in a lesser promotion, he can be a decent fighter in the UFC. Maybe not a championship level one or even a ranked one, but a fun fighter. He is only 23 years old. He still has time. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so I can pump out more of these videos. And adios.